Look, a Challenger. Look at this fancy garbage. Whoa. Too much science. <sighs> Cup holders. Cause I knew you'd be working on it. 3.6 liter EVT. Take one guess what it's in the shop for. If you said engine oil cooler, oh my God, you're right. Under all that plastic crap is my favorite Chrysler engine produced since the Magnum V8. And yes, I'm including the Hemi. Okay, maybe not the Hellcat. Anyway, it's the Pentastar Quad Cam V6. In cars and trucks and minivans and all kinds of other stuff, they come in 3.6 liter displacement. There is a smaller version used in Jeeps. I really like this engine. For one thing, it makes like 300 horsepower, which is respectable and plenty fun. My 2014 pickup had the same exact engine and it did burnouts and towed stuff and got over 20 miles a gallon when it wasn't doing burnouts and towing stuff. This one's in a Challenger. That means it might get 25 miles to the gallon. I don't know. Seeing as how it weighs a couple thousand pounds less, I imagine it's even more fun. And yes, I'm gonna test it. More on that later. The Pentastar V6 did have a couple teething problems. One of them, as far as I know, is uh, still a problem. And it's a big one. The engine oil cooler. It takes coolant in through two ports, oil in through the other two, and runs the one past the other. Oh, it also houses the oil filter. Um, it's a crap design and they leak. Everything, oil, coolant, you name it, they leak it. You may not know this, but locally I'm kind of known as the Dodge guy. And unfortunately, because I'm the Dodge guy, people come to my shop and say, hey, you're the Dodge guy. Do you want to work on my 2014 Dodge Grand Caravan? <sighs> Not the same thing. And because of this, I'm well familiar with the oil cooler issue. I'm also well familiar with the uh, rocker arm and camshaft issue, but uh, that's a story for another day. Once you've done this a few times, it's relatively straightforward, mostly at millimeter bolts. Small handful of wires and hoses over there, and there is a support brace or do on this side of the intake. Those are 10 mils. You're gonna to wanna to loosen those top and bottom on some applications. I think on this one, I can just slip it out. Did I say this one looked easy? Uh, it's got the bracket back there and two on the sides and I had to loosen that one to get the thing out. Kind of annoying. Now, remove the insulating soundproof rattle blanket and don't forget to put it back in. Yeah, I can't talk, what do you want? Now we pull the lower manifold. Oh, hey, when you're popping these connector clips, pry them up, but use your finger to brace them in place or they'll shoot off into the stratosphere. No, while I'm doing this, note, if you suspect this is your problem and you're smelling oil smells or coolant smells, uh, you don't actually have to start taking it apart to diagnose this. All you do, look down there. In this case, it's an oil swimming pool. Sometimes it's coolant, sometimes it's both. To pull the lower manifold, you do have to uh, unhook that wire keeper and pop the fuel line. Watch your eyes. If you do get gas in your eyes, the good news is it evaporates fast, unlike brake fluid. And here's what we're looking at when we got all that out of the way. Total time investment so far, um, 20 minutes, maybe? If you're smarter than me, you should probably blow all that off with compressed air before you get in here. I'm gonna grab the vacuum now and suck out all the dead spiders. This thing has an awesome feature. Not only is there a drain plug, which yeah, some cars are missing for the radiator, but there's a hose attached that goes through the spoiler down there. Incredible. If you pull the cartridge filter out, it drains all the oil in here with it. And that'll save on some mess when you remove this thing. I've done like a dozen of these and I only just realized that. In theory, I shouldn't need to drain all of the antifreeze, just, you know, a couple gallons out of the top, but uh, I won't really know when that is. Well, it drains a story. My 2014 Ram, when I bought it, made antifreeze smells. I had a theory I knew why, but I ignored it as long as possible till it overheated 185 degree day. And then I fixed it. I got one of these oil coolers off the internet. It cost a third of what they cost at the dealer. It seemed like a good idea at the time. All was great for like a month till I realized I was smelling oil. Thanks to the design of this block, you end up with that little swimming pool down there and it wasn't an issue 
until I accelerated quickly or went up a hill. Then it would all pour down the uh, transmission and land on the exhaust. That was pleasurable. Anyway, I ignored it for like a year and a half and finally replaced the cooler again with a dealership part. You should do the same. Only use an original Dodge oil cooler. Usually, I'm the one that says, but it's an original part that failed. Why would I put another in? I can just tell you from experience, the cheaper ones that are available, it's just not worth it. Also, these ones do come with new oil and coolant temperature sensors, which not all do. Most of them do seem to come with a new filter, but just get one from the dealership. Do it once. I've learned this lesson several times. As you can see here, the uh, retaining bolts are captive and come with the new unit as well. So we can go ahead and figure out here. It's an E8 external Torx bit. The heater hose clamped in the back is really annoying. Oh, here on this one, we can actually see it's leaking out of the plate there. Fancy. One more word to the wise here before I pull this thing out. If your swimming pool is deeper than this one, which is very possible, all that stuff is going to drain into one of the openings when you remove this cooler, likely into the oil return down into the block. Might want to change the oil when you do this. Luckily, I think I'm going to be okay. That's cool. You can actually see it uh, flexing in there where it leaks. Anyway, I got my help in hand here. Oh, there it goes. That one was stuck very well. Oh, by the way, even with the filter out, it's still going to leak. What? Um, everywhere. On the floor. And on your boots. In fact, I left myself a trail. Where was I? Oh, God. Uh, over here. Somewhere. Yeah, with it out, you can see how it all works. Up here, that's a dingus that goes in there. But those other four connections, they're just flat seals. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, mop all that up. Pop the new one in. Something like so. And I'm sure there's a very important torque spec for those tiny e-torx bolts. I just go in a zigzag pattern and snug them down by hand a couple times until it feels right. Yep. Now it's time to reinstall the lower manifold. If you ask the dealership, they will tell you to do this job. You need all the intake O-rings and they will try to sell them to you. If yours are still squishy, you're probably fine. Hmm. That's kind of ugly. Unfortunately, I have to put it back in anyway. Oh yes, note the um, spider intrusion evasion technique. Don't forget to take it back out. Same goes for the lower intake bolts. I'm sure there's a torque spec, and I'm sure it's very important. After all, they're tiny bolts securing plastic to aluminum. Anyway, get them tight. Crisscross, zigzag, whatever. Center out. Make sure you clip the wires and hoses back in position. Lock all the injector connectors down. If you do a job like this right, no one will know you've done it. In fact, that's what I aspire to for every job. Like that Dakota head job I just did. No one will be the wiser. You can listen to me now, because I am speaking from experience. Put this on top of the intake. So when you go to try to put it back in, you got to do this first. Otherwise, it gets forgotten. You don't need to ask how I know. What's that? You want more knowledge and experience? Okay. When you put this dang thing in, <sighs> make sure the screws are actually lined up in the holes. Otherwise, it ends up cockeyed and you get a vacuum leak. I didn't do that one, but it allegedly happened here. It's actually easier than you think to goof up. There are extra screw holes here for some reason. All right, these little bolts torque to seven to nine Newton meters. Sure, that's seven to nine Newton meters. See, what you want to do now is get all that on, but forget to hook the fuel line back up. So you got to take it off just to make sure you did it right the first time. Well, I need two quarts of 520 synthetic oil and it's 7.30 p.m. on a Friday. You know what that means? That means... It's Monday Jamie's problem. Anyway, that's the long and short of the oil cooler job. Buy OEM parts. <laughs> torque bolts correctly. Clean up the mess. And you'll be fine. Hey, if you don't buy OEM parts, you'll just be really good at it like I am.
Thanks for watching. I definitely won't take this thing for a joyride when I'm done. I would never do that.